Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. For meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can see, we have a ginormous tarot deck that we are going to be working with this week. It's actually two decks that are in one. It's already been pre-shuffled. We are going to be connecting with the energy of this week and seeing what the astrological skies have in store for us so that you can prepare, so that you can plan, so that you can vibe, manifest, feel it all. But then also, we are going to be working with the tarot. I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you are hydrated, well-rested, and feeling good. If not, this is a wonderful time to connect in with any type of self-healing, self-care rituals that are mandatory for you to participate in here as a human being while well, you're here as a human being here on earth, okay? So go ahead and grab what you need to grab, whether it be pen, paper, notepad, journals, water, tea, coffee, etc., etc. And let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, I really want to talk to you guys about the fact that we are coming out of the Capricorn full moon energy. This was last week. Capricorns, again, that energy can be notoriously a little difficult, stoic, and hard to work with. However, the main point of Capricorn ruled by Saturn, the main point, the main thing that is trying to drive home for so many of us is what is going to be new, newly regular for us, our new routine. If there are parts of your life that are stunted, outgrown, are parts of you that you hide behind or things, energies that you hide behind, the planets are pushing you outside of your comfort zone, especially when it comes to you redefining yourself. This is not something that was just showing up at the light of the full moon, but this is a common theme that is showing up the majority of this year, especially because we have so many energies still concentrated in Aries, Chiron, the North Node, okay? So these are some things that we like to look out for. At the moment of me pulling the chart, it is <clears throat> Cancer season. Cancer is the very opposite of Capricorn and leads us to go to the root of the home, the hearth within every single one of ourselves. If we do not feel stable, if we do not feel supported, if we do not feel loved, if we are not actively nurturing ourselves in the way that our mind, body, soul, spirit needs to be nurtured, we can find ourselves feeling insignificant. We can find ourselves feeling lost in the tidal wave of life. We can find ourselves feeling insecure, even hiding ourselves. That's another energy here that we don't need to take on any longer. These astrological signs are, I'm sorry, these astrological transits are teaching you how to check in with yourself deeper. For some of you guys, this may look like tapping into mother, the mother wound, if there is a mothering wound, or if there is um, something that you specifically need for yourself, again, to self-nurture. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but one of the first cards that are jumping out is actually the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is interesting because she's not known for being emotional. She actually disconnects from her emotions in order to quote-unquote quote unquote, do the right thing. At the time of me pulling the chart again this week, we have the Sun, Venus, and Mercury transiting through the sign of Cancer. We also have the part of Fortune transiting through Cancer. And again, this is more energy here that is teaching us how to emotionally, sorry guys, my notes just fell, how to emotionally regulate, but also how to create any type of boundaries um, or to be able to understand and be even attracted to certain type of boundaries that are going to help you to be more connected within, within yourself, within your emotions. Um, it's interesting too, the idea of doing the right thing is a message that's coming up for us this week, because what does that mean to do the right thing? Sometimes this is like uh, when society tells us that this is the way that we should do it. This is the way that we need to go. But when you sit with yourself, when you sit with your, your intuition and you ask yourself, is this right for me? Does this feel healthy and right for me? And the answer is no. It's up to you to be able to have the confidence, the courage to pivot as needed. 
For some of you guys, please pay attention to your emotions right now, not even in, in how you mother and nurture yourself, but your expectations on how you mother and nurture other things around you. For example, career, your job, your friendships, your life, your garden. What does that look like for you? On the flip side, some of you may find yourself already drawn to, connected to areas, places that bring that, that really nurturing, um, abundant energy. And you're going to find yourself absorbing this energy, taking it in and really intentionally slowing down so that you're not feeling, so that you're able to uh, like really receive all the, all of the abundance in, in the moment. If not, if this is something that you feel like you're lacking or that you're in need of, this is another season in our lives where the, the planets are showing us and teaching us. This is something that we want you to focus on. This is something that will be a priority for you and we want to make this a part of your new normal okay so yes last week we had the full moon happening in the sign of capricorn and again that energy can bring up a lot of heightened emotions it can bring up parts of you that not that those emotions have a difficult time expressing themselves or that they're stunted but they can be heavy to hold it's absolutely important that the queen of swords especially sitting here looking us dead in the eyes says listen the fact that these emotions are here, it's telling, it's talking to you, it's trying to teach you something about yourself. And we want to validate those emotions. When we want to give space for you to feel your emotions and understand where it is that they're coming from without needing to kind of explain yourself or push them aside or put everything else before what it is that you have been feeling. On the flip side of this, I want to tell you that for some of you guys, You've gotten to a point where you have learned about patience, like supreme patience. Things, energies around you have really been testing your patience and you are needing to give grace to the situation, probably because it's innocent. It doesn't come from a har harmful place, although it may be doing harm. I don't know if that makes sense for everyone. I think that might be a specific situation for some people. It, the first thing that comes to my mind is if family or friends are saying things out of jest or like they're laughing they're sorry darling somehow my um computer or my camera cut out but what i was trying to say is yeah it's some some of the energies here are activating some type of mothering type of energy within you that you want to be very aware of or you are becoming strongly aware of what people like how energies are moving and you can see that someone's intention is not coming from a malicious place, but what they're saying or what they're doing or how they're moving is harmful. And this is that part of you, especially that Mercury, Venus, and the Sun are transiting through Cancer. This is that part of you that's being activated that says, like, yo, this is not appropriate. What you're saying, and, and there really is a strong like bear mother bear type energy that's coming through in your words that is I don't want to say overreacting because it it feels appropriately reacting but like you're appropriately reacting to the situation where a boundary gets crossed or you're expressing your expectations of exactly what it is that you see and feel and deem is appropriate for the for that circumstance and this can really rub people the wrong way Again, especially if they're defensive, cancer energy, and like remember, we're all under the same umbrella of energies here. Cancer energy can be very sensitive and it automatically assumes, like people are automatically assuming that you understand exactly where they're coming from when they say certain things. But again, it's not landing. Like the energy may not land. The words, the sense of humor, the sarcasm may not land. And this is where this Queen of Swords comes up and says, Again, with Mercury, Venus, and the Sun transiting through Cancer, yo, know, this you you don't get to say this, or this is not appropriate, or this isn't helpful, or this is where my boundary, my line, doesn't you you don't get to cross that. This is really important and meaningful for so many of us because although it's really difficult to speak up for yourself, or it can be very difficult, or if you're learning new ways of approaching how to have difficult like a a conversation to stand up for yourself. Like maybe you may be someone who in the past may say that, say your boundary, but you have a smile on your face. So it seems like people are not respecting what it is that you're saying. Or you might be someone on the flip side who can be very harsh and, and 
like can uh, make people feel uh, what's the word like not overwhelmed but intimidated by by what it is that you're saying because you're you are so you're you are so direct you know it's it's like you're the end at the end of the day you're doing what is being asked of you or what you need to do as far as speaking up but you may be tailoring and being very sensitive to how you pass that message across when it's appropriate as needed this has a lot to do with the growth that pluto has been giving so many of us right now currently pluto is still retrograde transiting back through Aquari aquarius retracing its steps so there is this need to detach not that not to say that you don't care or not that it's not important or that you're completely disconnected from the outcome but it's giving you a sense of rational and logical perspective to help you to see the greater good so that you can get to an outcome that is um, for everyone's highest and greatest good involved right so with this i think that this is one of those weeks too where you want to set intention for discernment. You want to set intention for power in your words, power in your intention, power in communication, and also protection because this these energies can be sensitive, but also it's when you're speaking up, when you're speaking out, sometimes it's it can be uh, misunderstood. These are energies that you may start have already start feeling depending on your natal chart. And these may be energies that you'll be feeling down the pipeline moving forward. I do want to tell you that some people here on the flip side, they may feel a little extra sensitive. They may want to kind of retreat back into the, dormit the, dormit the dormitory is how I want to say it <laughs> of themselves. Just their egos may be hurt and bruised or they may be feeling some some type of way they may be feeling a little sensitive or for someone here they may feel like there's nothing they can't do something right you know when someone gets kind of like punished or chastised and they're like i can't do anything right um that there's that energy there how you show up for this situation i don't want to tell you what to do but everyone is going to be different it's this is more lingering issues that this person has been dealing with and stomaching and holding on to for some quite some time. Whenever we deal with cancer energy, I I'm never surprised to see a sensitivity, like say see something that someone was sensitive about bubbling up and brewing over in a way that seems unexpected and completely unrelated, but it's because they've been holding on to it for a minute. So again, there's this need to observe to give grace to the situation there's a lot of patience here that can be tested this does not mean that you need to be the bigger situ the bigger person in every single situation for some of you guys you may actually go back and forth between being the one who speaks up and ha is asserting the boundary to being the a person who's just like listen i i'm not going to be the bigger person today if anything i might be hiding behind you know, hiding in the house until I can get my, my emotions and my mind right, gather those things um, up together, okay? So that's something to look out for, for this week. And it's all a part of balance. It's all part of life, okay? So today is the 24th. It's on the 26th is really interesting. This is when Mercury, the planet of communication, is going to be in this beautiful trine with Saturn. Now, remember, Mercury is transiting through the sign of Cancer. Saturn is transiting currently through the sign of Pisces. And this is a wonderful opportunity to have a heartfelt conversation with someone, to begin to nail and cement plans for the future, to be able to explore, to venture out into the unknown, to see what, what interests you, what is exciting for you um yeah we have the sorry as i was talking about this i wanted to flip the cards over we have the full card queen of pentacles and the emperor card as well as justice two of pentacles and of course the queen of queen of swords so there is this emphasis this week on communication and being assertive and clear on what you are saying what you want and reinforcing boundaries i don't want to jump ahead but saturn retrograde is going to be in full effect i'm sorry june 29th and saturn currently transiting through pisces it's muddled right now it has been muddled saturn does not fare well when it's transiting through pisces 
And when we have this beautiful trine between Saturn and Mercury, Mercury transiting through Cancer, Cancer is emotions and water and it can feel it can feel a lot. You you can be feeling a lot when it comes to your thoughts, your your how like the temperament of how like your actual emotions, your spiritual self. This is a time to pace yourself, to ground yourself as much as possible. Also keep in mind that for so many of us, we need to be patient with ourselves and this new life that you are walking into, this new chapter, this new territory. Even though the justice card is here and it can represent like fairness and balance, really what it is that I want to talk about is with this card and what's coming up for me as I'm looking at this, especially with two of pentacles here, is making sure that you are giving in a way that is appropriate, making sure that the energy around you, as far as you can control it, that it's not in, in any form of any extreme. For some of you guys, Mercury being Mercury trying Saturn is going to stabilize you to be able to take care of some of these root things when it comes to your business, your finances, your bank account, when it comes to responsibilities, when it comes to routine and structure, things that are going to help you to feel more in control of your life but also um, more complete, more whole, more, more healthy. What are some wonderful ways that you can incorporate health and healing into your your day-to-day -day life right now, some balance? If you are someone who has been working a lot, this is absolutely important and mandatory that you pull up from whatever it is, the work that is that you do, go for a walk, that you watch a movie, read a book, something to kind of change the energy so that we're not overexerting ourselves and um, that one aspect of our life or the way that we move isn't dominating over the other. There is so much need and call for balance here. And I do want to say that with the way that the planets are unfolding within the charts, there's just, there's just hyper, hyper focus on like responsibility or you, you being capable of being able to do what needs to be done to to keep things balanced, to keep things healthy, to keep things maintain maintained. For someone here, there's a leveling up when it comes to your maturity. You really are taking into your own hands, like your happiness, your goals, the way that you see your life for the future and even now. There's this really strong message here of encouragement and keeping keeping the faith going on with that. Like you're on the right path. If there's someone here that may not agree with you. I don't see you even blinking an eye like in that direction. Like I don't see you it changing or wavering your plans whatsoever. I think these energies here are showing very very focused determination and I also see it being harmless. It's not like you are pinky in the brain and you're the brain trying to take over the world. What you really are trying to do is gain control of yourself and maintain healthy balance and healthy habits and healthy lifestyle all especially because of what the planets have been teaching you don't forget that jupiter is transiting through gemini this is not a new transit jupiter brings wisdom philosophy exploration travel and gemini helps to expand and explore our options so that we are open and, re and receiving of this wisdom wherever it is that it lies for us where do you feel yourself being called to similar to the le leprechaun searching for the pot of gold? What is the pot of gold in your life? For some of you guys, it's travel and new experiences and you doing this for you by yourself. Normally in the past, you may have only expected that you would travel and do things in a, in a couple or with friends or whatever the case is, but you really are venturing out onto into your own, into the unknown on your own. And there's something so like fulfilling about this and you doing it for you that is just absolutely wonderful. For the rest of for the rest of you or a few many others, I'm seeing someone here boldly stepping forward into a new phase in themselves, in their lives. And I do want to tell you that there may be fear because anytime when we're dealing with the fool card and anytime when I'm looking at the charts and I'm seeing, you know, a lot of signs, a lot of the signs in water and emotion and even retrograde, 
how can it not be intense? How could it not feel overwhelmingly a lot? But I do want to tell you that there's this recogni recognition of pacing yourself, going step by step, and continuing to pull out of your fear outside of pulling out of your doubt, pulling out of insecurity and pulling yourself up onto your feet and, and talking to yourself, grounding yourself in the knowledge that I am capable, I can do this, I am strong, I am prepared. So with that, I just feel like as long as you have the balance of the moments where you feel you feel that emotion and you're expressing that emotion as well as pairing it up with steadiness and like affirmations or whatever it is that is speaking life into you and empowering you. You have the queen of pentacles here, the emperor card and the fool card. These cards here do not, they do not waver. They are very confident. They're very self-assured. They believe in themselves. Also, it's not for nothing because they are on solid ground. I do want to clarify the justice card here a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So that spoke for itself. I'm going to go with this. Yeah. We have six of pentacles reversed and the four of pentacles reversed. Again, this is about, um, giving, this is about giving to things that are asking from you or of you. And I don't think that you're going to do it. <laughs> I, I don't think that you're going to do it. For example, let's say someone has an expectation of, okay, you owe me this, or I'm do this, or I want this. If you decide to give to them, it's because you, it makes sense for you to give to that situation um, or give to that person there. But if, if there's a sense of duty or obligation that is not appropriate, there's a healthy boundary here that I see you not even responding to this text message, this phone call, this email. You don't need to respond back. I feel you moving forward. If this has to do with something that you actually do, like let's say it's like a bill that comes in that's like, hey, we got to pay this. That seems like it's the appropriate thing that I, I feel like this week you're going to be taken care of. Outside of that, this is not you expend, extending your energy to people or places if it doesn't resonate with you. And that can sound so obvious, but guys, think about the times in your life where you have are invited to something and you want to say no. You're hoping that they cancel. They don't cancel. They're asking you, you know, where are you at? Um, and then you show up and you kind of you know, do do like give your best face, like try to stay positive throughout the situation, but all the time you're just kind of like wishing that you would have stayed home. It's kind of similar to that where it's like if you're not feeling it, you just simply will not show up. You won't respond. Um, you won't be open. You won't be receptive. You, you're kind of shutting that energy down. When the four of pentacles is reversed, that person, it's not that they're being like overly greeted, greedy, even with the six of pentacles, they're saying, I just don't feel, I don't have it in me to give. However, with the justice card here, if there is something that you do owe, I do see you having to give that up, that this energy will flip over in that way. If not, then of course, anytime when there's a justice card, there will always be some type of punishment here. Yeah. Um, Five of cups is the next card to show up. I want to see what this is about. Queen of Pentacles, again, this energy here. Wow, do you see the doubles here? That's so interesting. Five of Cups, Five of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. Let me go ahead and... Shuffle on this. What could this be? We have the Knight of Wands, Eight of Pentacles. Both these cards were reversed, and we also have the Page of Cups. So... Yeah, for someone here, this could really, this could really have to do with just feeling very vulnerable, feeling very like, again, it's cancer season and think about the symbolism of cancer. Cancer is the crab that needs its shell and that shell represents protection and support and a barrier and a boundary. And if we don't have that, then how vulnerable we can feel. For some of us, you may be feeling, you may be facing life, not really panning out in the way that it is that you want it to. Like it feels like things may not be working out so easily and effortlessly. And that's where this disappointment is coming from. 
truthfully though with this energy spirit is still asking you not to kind of speed speed through this and rush through this moment in your life to give yourself as much space again to feel what is that you're feeling but also make sure that I don't want to say that the plan is still in force right but that's how spirit is kind of saying it like even if we give you instruction, like even if your spirit guides, your angels, your guides, your ancestors, the divine has given you specific instruction for what is to come in your life, it's important that you follow through with that even if you don't emotionally feel confident that it will work out or if you are feeling emotionally like overwhelmed or sad. Some of you guys, you have to kind of be the one to guide yourself out of I don't say the darkness, but kind of guide yourself through difficult times, even if your emotions don't feel like you can do it. Let's say you're in this new chapter, because again, we have the full card here that keeps showing up. Let's say, you're, let's say that you're in this new chapter of growth and, and abundance and support and love. And even though you know that this is what you wanted, even though if you look back and see that this is what you've manifested, sometimes it can still bring up difficult emotion or bring up lingering doubt, or maybe you don't feel well, maybe there's sadness, maybe there's achiness, whatever the situation is. Like Five of Cups double is giving disappointment and it really, it really does give disappointment. It gives depression, it gives like pessimism, pessimism sometimes, like not feeling so happy and excited about the future or what is happening now in the moment. Still, angels, your angels and guides, the way that they're showing up right now, they're not saying to like push away your emotion. They're saying regardless of what is that you're feeling, there still is a plan here. And this is something that I do want to, I can relate to like by a lot. So not to bring myself into this, you guys know I'm always sharing with you different examples and metaphors. Some, most of them are very symbolic. Some of them are symbolic in moments of my life. Some of them are experiences that I can share with you. In this situation, there have been many times in the Bahati life journey for me personally where I would show up, show up, show up, show up, show up, show up, show up for years, for years. It's been over 11 years, right? And um, especially when I would go live and I would put on a brave face, be that queen of pentacles, show up, give my messages, give my predictions, talk about astrology, even through some of the more difficult transits. And I would not want it to show that I was struggling during those times. Sometimes I would share that I was struggling, but the, at the end of the day, it was I felt like it was my duty and my responsibility to show up in the way that is consistent to help others through life because we were all going through this journey together. And my goal was to not allow how I was feeling to step in the way of my commitment to the plan and the path. Now, there were extreme paths, like a, an extreme path that I took with that, that there were many times and many moments along the journey that I would have benefited from taking a break. I'm living and learning through that now. I understand that now. But my time then was very committed, very um, strict, like strict, very strict with myself. I would not miss a Monday and for, for years until it was time for me to you know, really start to kind of change and pivot, you know, on, on that path. So I say that to say that in those moments, right, in your life where your emotions don't feel supportive, like you're not feeling your best, your, your enthusiasm may not be the high, the highest. You may be having a cold or the flu or feeling a little nauseous, sick to your stomach, but there's some type of steadfastness that is still showing through, shining through these cards right now. Um, with Saturn going retrograde on June 29th, I do want to say that Saturn does give us a little permission to pivot, to change the commit, the commitment, the bond that it is that you have made for yourself and to others. It is up to you to decide where how that is how that applies to your life someone here something that you are committed to a person a relationship a a, a, a job something maybe coming back down the pipeline 
and resurfacing, not in a way that's negative, but in a way that says, um, you know, if we don't make any changes here, this is something that when Saturn moves direct, I could harbor resentment or this commitment that I made can feel like a prison. If there is someone who is moving forward with their freedom and breaking bonds already, Saturn retrograde, don't be disappointed and don't be defeated when you may start to see a little bit of turbulence because Saturn retrograde will bring that as well as it's not just Saturn retrograde here. We also have Pluto retrograde. Pluto draws us, every single one of us, into the parts of ourselves and our lives that makes us feel like we have control, that makes us feel like we are empowered. When it's retrograde, those energies can be called into question. If you are dealing with toxic people, toxic energies, you may start to see the worst of them trying to exert that control and that power once again, especially if they see you empowered and moving on in your life without them. Typically, this won't be as explosive as it could be. It is a very stubborn and uh, irritating energy. Me personally, I would see it as irritating, agitating, annoying, especially because Mars ruling our drive, our will, and how we wish to accomplish things, transiting through Taurus right now, can be very stubborn and can be... Um, not quick to react, but when it reacts, it reacts in a powerful, strong way that we can't really ignore. And it tends to be a thorn stuck in our side that it's important that we don't continue walking, that we pull off on the side of the road and we start to work on extracting that thorn so that that thorn doesn't turn into a bigger infection, okay? I do wanna say one last thing before we move on to the Oracle cards is, um, do re do rem do remember, guys, that uh, the part of fortune is transiting through Cancer, and the emotions, the feeling, the intuition, the power, the leadership is there. That is where you're going to find incredible power. Is you learning how to speak up for yourself? Is you? practicing speaking up for yourself and calling the shots for your life. Even if you are a woman or if you identify as feminine energy, you can you still have masculine energy within you with the emperor card here. You are grounded, you are stable, you are supported, and you are encouraged to do what's in your best interest, to call the shots on what is for your highest and greatest good and to make that your normal. I don't know why I'm getting an image of an egg specifically an ostrich egg. If someone can look up the symbolism of the ostrich um, or even an ostrich egg specifically, I, but one of the, the, the symbolism that is coming through to me spiritually that I can sense and feel is the, the magnitude of strength that is that you hold, the power, the impression that you can leave and that you can lead with even if you are tiny, even if you are small, they, they're, you hold significant power. The ostrich is really coming through as an animal totem right now. So random, so specific. So let me go ahead and shuffle from the oracle. And then I'm going to pivot and go into the extended messages, which sometimes I have... Well, I've always charged for the extended messages. I think I'm going to have the extended messages be free today. I just feel very, I feel like not generous. I just, well, yeah, maybe that's it. I just feel like pouring into you guys even more. But YouTube um, can be weird when I, when I get long-winded here and other people can get long-winded. If you want the extended message, it will be down below. It will be free 99, right? So completely free, I promise. Let's go ahead and look at these Oracle cards first before we say goodbye. And then I say hello to those who have signed on for the extended. So the first card to jump out is so interesting and so synchronistic and doesn't surprise me. It says karma is on your side. And then we have the justice card here. Don't forget that the justice card was here. So karma is so interesting. It's teaching us difficult lessons so that we can over time master them. As I'm saying that though, please be graced. Please give yourself grace 
Karma doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It means that you are in the midst of a, a, a learning opportunity. Life is always going to be about finding problems, finding solutions, and finding a way to enjoy the journey the entire time. Do not add or amplify to your quote-unquote karma, right, by feeling a sense of like you're being punished or that you're being imprisoned or that you have bad luck. That's not the, I really just want to say that that's not what you're meant to, that's not how you're meant to approach life right now. That's not how the universe, your angels, the divine wishes you to look at life right now. They want you to switch up how you are approaching difficult situations. They want you to switch up how you, your perspective when it comes to doing hard things, that if you are expecting the worst, mentally, you will drag yourself down faster than the situation itself, you know? So for those of you guys that have anxiety, if you have fear of the future, if you are reverting back to childishness ways or immature ways or ways that you have outgrown, be aware of it. Be aware of it. And let's pivot and do different. The back of the card says, if you could read all of the minds that I read, hear all of the prayers that I hear, and beat all of the hearts that I beat, I wonder if you'd even believe how often you're thought of, talked about, and fallen in love with. It's payback time. Andale, andale, the universe. Okay? So this is, again, this, this feeling of expecting... The, expecting the best out of a situation or even if the situation is not giving you its best looking at it and being like yeah but I'm still I'm still me and I am great I am good I am pure I am divine this and I, I leave my light on the situation and for that reason it becomes better even if it wasn't even if it didn't reflect that the next cards that we have here is it's not as if you need anyone. So that's really interesting too and makes a lot of sense because again, we have the full card, Queen of Pentacles and the Emperor card. These cards, they're not alone, but in this moment, they stand out and they're showing up as leaders. And I see this as you being a standout person in your life, a leader, an advocate in your life. And not needing to check in with other people. If you find yourself asking others for permission or submitting to others' requests and their wishes for your life, we are on the wrong path. <laughs> We're on the right wrong path, to put it mildly. The next card that is I'm seeing here is you're being watched by loving eyes. That is so creepy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, it doesn't feel, it actually doesn't feel creepy. It feels, again, it feels like leadership. Um, who is watching you? I, I see this first as your angels and your guides watching over you. And I'm also seeing the impact that you may be leading to others, but also it could be annoying if other people want to subject their opinions, their perspectives, their advice in a situation where you didn't ask for their, their input to, to infuse at any, in any way, shape or form into your reality. This is again, where those boundaries kind of come up and say, respectfully, I'm not open to hearing what it is that you have to say. I, I didn't ask you and I'm going to do things this way. Hopefully that doesn't offend you. If I need you, then I will reach out to you and text you. But for right now, the best thing that I want to do for myself is to figure this out solo dolo. I'll text you if, if anything, you know, just real clear, straightforward. If that person gets in their feelings, gets butt hurt, it is what it is. That's not your problem. You're doing bigger and better things for yourself in this moment. At the end of the, end of the day, this is your life. This is your life. And if you make mistakes, the right people that are and who the right people who genuinely care for you and want the best for you are not going to hold it against you when you speak up for yourself, number one. But when you pivot, even if it matches the advice that they would have given you in the first place, they would be like, all right, no, it's cool. I'm glad you, you learned and I've got the right resources to help resolve this for you. Let's go ahead and pick up and move forward. But do you remember that the word karma is synonymous with life lessons and your this is your life and these are your lessons and it's for you to learn however however you see fit do know that you're not alone your angels and your ancestors are on your side so with that 
Being said, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that this was helpful to you. I have a ton of Oracle cards that I'm going to shuffle and be pulling. We're going to be looking at the journey ahead for, for us this week. We're going to look at some type of hidden energies that may be influencing us for better, for good. We're going to dive into the intentions of those energies for good or for bad. And then we're going to tap into um, earth energy because there's a lot of grounding work that's been coming through and also empowering ourselves as we go through this week. That will be down in the extended. Again, it's going to be free for everyone. It's going to be a link that you can download, like an extra video that you can listen to. Um, yeah, no catch. It's just me just being generous, always overgiving. <laughs> that's just kind of who, who I am and what I do. Um, but until then, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. If this video was helpful to you, please, before you click out, please give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.